one of the perennial questions that you all ask in the Thriving Urology Practice Facebook group is flexible scopes. As far as breakage, cost, what do you all use, etc. So I'm at the Arizona, Arizona Urologic Society's annual meeting at the uh, El Conquistador in Tucson, Arizona. I'm here with Eric who is with Stortz and he has a, an in-office uh, type of a product, flexible uh, cystoscope product that uh, he's going to talk about. Something relatively new. I personally use Olympus. Other people have used uh, Stortz and, and some people are using disposable uh, cystoscopes. So let's, let's talk about this particular product which is called the... It's called the C-View. And this is a digital flexible cystoscope that is really made for the private practice. So from a cost perspective, from a durability perspective, it plugs into two different video systems, uh, depending on what your needs are. If you want to take pictures or do video, we have the all-in-one telepack system, which is a little bit more expensive. And then we also have the C-Hub 2, which is basically a little camera box about the size of a, a little bigger than a, a cell phone and the scope will plug into that and you can use any external monitor to run a signal to it. So I'm going to back up, a, uh, I'm going to step aside a second and I'm going to show you guys the telepack which is this thing right here. So in, in the OR maybe that could be more applicable but then in the, or it could be in the office. You can set this on the, on the tower and then you can use this for the office. Um, but then the C-Hub is a tiny little uh, box, it's an interface box that you can plug this cystoscope into. So imagine a scenario where you have the, the monitor on the wall that articulates out of the wall and then you have the C-Hub behind it and then you connect this flexible scope and, and this is really cool. This is the size of the cable. So you know, those of you who are using uh, gosh, the fiber optic soaps, you have to deal with the light cord, you have to deal with uh, uh, the actual uh, uh, the, the, the tubing and stuff like that. All you have to do is plug this little thing in to the box, which then connects to the articulating monitor coming off the wall, and you're set. You're ready to go. Uh, the the durability is one of the concerns for a lot of uh, for a lot of the uh, practices. So how has this changed, improved, and how are you improving the durability? Yeah, great question. Obviously, you know it's a big investment, right? You don't want that scope to go out after you know, six months or even a year, you want to really protect that investment. And so one of the things that Stortz has done with this particular scope is they've moved the working channel from six o'clock to nine o'clock. And that really, uh, the goal with that is to create more durability around deflection, especially if you have an instrument in there. Um, so that's one of, the, one of the things that we've done. Generally speaking, when it comes to controlling repairs in the office setting, in the hospital too, for that matter, it's really a a one-two approach. It's, you, you have to have both facets. As a rep, I'm always focused on really um, in-servicing, care and handling, making sure that if you have a new staff member that comes on board that they know exactly how expensive the equipment is, exactly how to you know clean, decontaminate, and use high-level disinfectant. And then another component with that, what I try to do locally is quarterly reviews on performance where I'm meeting with an office manager or um, coordinator, urology coordinator going through and saying, hey, where's the practice at right now? Did we have a scope go out? Why did it go out? What does that evaluation report tell us where there's clues in there that we can actually use to get ahead of any negative trends? So you have that, that's the first component. Yeah. And then the second component is financial. You have to have, there's packages that you can like insurance, right? There's packages, service agreements that you can use to protect against, you know, that big cash flow hit of X amount of dollars when a scope goes down. So it's that one-two punch that kind of mitigates the risk and improves that longevity of the scope. Yeah. So certainly having it available is, is key. And one of the, the important things to uh, preserve the operational readiness of this scope is the proper cleaning, technique of cleaning. And you, you mentioned one of the common mistakes uh, that medical assistants or whoever cleans the scopes makes. Would you, would you share it sure, with us, sure. one of the things? Yeah, one of the most common mistakes I see when cleaning a, a flexible scope um, is basically the, the user will pull on the shaft too hard 
and this is rubber, right? And you'll see it. What, what, what will happen is you'll have end up with a donut, like a little ridge of, of rubber at the end of your scope. And that comes from pulling on the shaft too hard. The rubber gets stretched out. And then once that donut forms, it's there. So essentially you can work it back out, but it's, it has memory. So it's always going to kind of come back. Um, so you just dab it. You don't need to pull on it hard. And that's where the education and the yeah. care and handling comes back full circle. Yeah. And also the uh, duration, you, you don't want to, what I learned over time is that you don't want to over soak the, the scope. You don't want to just leave it in the restart or whatever it is that you're using and then forget about it because the glue gets disintegrated and then you have a leak with the, with the scope. Correct. So. Correct. Yeah, you'll get leak tests from over soaking, which that's where the timer and being vigilant and making sure that it's not in there longer than, you know, the, the company recommends. And then leak tests will also occur a lot um, from a digital perspective uh, when the scope is cleaned with instruments in the sink. A lot of times, you know, a grasper or a scissor will puncture the shaft. Um, that's from a digital perspective. From a fiber optic perspective, leak tests, leak tests occur when the shaft a lot of times will get torqued and there's glass going through that shaft, right? So the glass breaks and you see that little... Um, more, you see those little black dots on your screen that's broken glass yep. and that glass doesn't break straight down it breaks out and it, when it breaks outward it punctures the shaft yep. you have a leak test failure yep. and so that's how you fiber optics is really about shaft management yeah and I, I and those of you who are using fiber optic i highly recommend that you look into a digital scope just like a high-speed internet just like sex just like orgasms once you experience it you'll never go back right so once you experience a digital Cystoscope or ureter scope, it's going to be very difficult for you to say, I don't want to switch over to a digital scope. And I've been using digital scope since I started my practice. Once I experienced it, I, I could never go back. Maintenance of the uh, scope is key. Proper maintenance, watching the soak time, having some sort of a service agreement for some practices or especially hospital systems may be a way to Make sure that you have scopes ready and available and make sure you mitigate some of your financial risks. So thank you so much, Eric, for sharing your uh, information regarding the uh, C-Scope, is that what it's called? Yeah, C-View. C-View and also the C-Hub. All right. You. As always, if you guys have any questions, comments, leave them below. Bye-bye.